Hi everyone. So today uh, we're gonna pressure can some fajitas. So we're gonna start with the seasoning. So we're gonna um, make a seasoning blend. Here we go. So we're gonna start off, actually we'll start off with these. I've got smoked paprika and I love this brand because it's really smoky. I'm just mixing them up in these little Tupperwares because they have a lid and I can shake it good. We're gonna add about a teaspoon. And then, let me just put the lid on. We'll set it aside. With a teaspoon of garlic powder. Well, this is granulated. It's more a little more granulated. See, not so powdery. Actually, I'm gonna go with two because we love garlic. Oh, but I'm also putting a minced garlic too. Ah, that'll be fine. <laughs> If you don't want so much garlic, then don't put so much. Um, this is um, chili powder. It's a dark one, but it doesn't matter. Any chili powder. Oh, doesn't fit. And this, uh, my spices are from everywhere. I've got so many spices. I'm gonna give it a good teaspoon. I'm gonna go with some oregano. Oh, this one's not even open yet, guys. Ooh, it smells really good. Teaspoon of oregano. Basically, it's a teaspoon of everything. Got some granulated onion. We're also gonna put some onions in there because it's fajitas. And I love onions and bell peppers. And these will last on your shelf for years. And if you've never pressure canned before, don't be intimidated. The first one I got was the carry, and I love cumin, so I'm gonna go with two teaspoons of cumin, ground cumin. Um, the first one I got was the carry pressure canner, the electric one. And I'm so glad I got it first because I was so intimidated by this big beast over here, the stovetop one. And I'm going to do a teaspoon of coriander. And coriander is basically the, I believe the cilantro seed ground up. I'm not 100% sure, but it's either that or the just the cilantro. Oh, and I also want to use some minced garlic. That's dehydrated, not fresh. Of course, you could add fresh to the jars and even fresh cloves. But I was worried that those might get like a bitter because we're gonna pressure can. So I think that the dehydrated will do better. Let me grab a knife. So I couldn't find minced garlic in my local stores. It's like, what? So um, I bought this big one from Amazon, I believe. Ooh, it smells good. So let's go with two teaspoons of that. Like I said, we like a lot of garlic. Okay, now I'm not adding salt because I'm going to uh, add to our jars a little bit of um, chicken stock and I don't wanna add open my homemade jars of chicken stock. So we're gonna use the Herb Ox chicken broth. And um, I buy this one because it doesn't have MSG and MSG gives me a bad headache and as far as I've found this is the only brand that does not have MSG and it's hard to find the beef one and I used it all up put the lid on give it a good shake I ended up adding one more teaspoon of the smoked paprika just because I love it so much. And you can add red pepper flakes. Um, I saw one on Pinterest, a uh, fajita seasoning, and it called for dry mustard, which I do have, but I thought that was an odd flavor to add to it, so I didn't. Okay, we're done with our spices. Hopefully that's enough for all the jars we're gonna make. You know, I may wanna double this. <laughs> okay. We'll be right back with all the chicken and I'll show you how to get it in the jars and get it ready. 
All right, we're gonna start by slicing the bell peppers. Um, you wanna do the pieces pretty big because we're gonna be pressure canning. Um, yeah, so if you do them too small, they'll just turn to mush. So hopefully my dogs don't make any noise. Bell peppers are their favorite. They love them. Oh, he's already dancing on the floor. <laughs> I just save him a few little chunks. Okay. Let me just show you. I would say, usually I'll cut them in strips for fajitas. So I'm gonna go with about like that and then just half. So pretty good sized chunks because um, we don't want them to like turn to total mush in the pressure canner. And this little piece is smaller, so I'm just gonna do half, just like that. I've got red, yellow, orange, and green. And uh, I just thought it'd be cool to have a colorful variety inside the jar. So when it's sitting on your shelf, it'll look pretty. Okay, so and we're gonna do the onion pretty big too. All right, well, let me chop all this. I got a whole lot of chopping to do, look at all of it. So I'll be back. All right, so I was gonna add purple onion too, because when I cook fajitas, I like to use purple onion, but then I thought, what if it turns everything purple? So I'm just giving it like three, and then three. So it looks, well this is a fair, ooh, it's getting my eyes, about like that. Oh my goodness, my eyes are already burning, and I've just started, you guys. All right, well, after I cut about 10 of these, we'll be back. Okay, we've got our jars sanitized. Well, you don't really have to sanitize them if you're pressure cooking. Um, I feel, I went ahead and filled all these and these, sorry, he thinks there's food involved, which there is. So I'm gonna just show you with this one, how to fill it. We're gonna start with the chicken and we're doing a raw pack. So we put the chicken in the jar and not really three quarters, but more than half. Stop it. Sorry. And then you could always, I could add a little more to that one. Those look okay. That's okay. Hey, that's enough out of you, mister. All right, so this all needs to be sanitized. I'm gonna wash my hands and we'll be right back. Okay, I've got a new clean funnel. We've got the chicken in there. Here's our seasoning mix. I'm gonna add that on top of the chicken. And I didn't add salt to this because we're adding the bouillon stuff that um, the uh, chicken stock made from the bouillon powder and it does have salt so I don't want to go too salty so this is our mixture that we made and I'm going to add one teaspoon to each jar so we'll set that aside for a minute and I'm putting it on top of the chicken because I think it'll flavor it better and then actually let's do the onion first just chunk the onion in there Get a good amount, okay. And this is gonna push down a little too, so you can push the chicken. And you could put a little less, maybe I went a little overboard. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Just shove them in there. Okay, that's gonna be too much. Take two out. Okay, so let's shove it in. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna put the funnel over there. Okay, we've got it full. So now we wanna take the chicken stock. Let's give it a little stir. And I'm sorry, you guys. 
My dog's going crazy. Okay. Give it a little. Okay, so because the chicken's gonna create a bunch of its own juice, I only wanna do about half, maybe a tiny bit, about right there. And that might even be too much because when it creates its own juice, we don't want it to siphon out and go everywhere. So this is probably maybe even a little too much. And honestly, I think I would put, well, that's enough chicken because you want to have enough to fill some, you know, tortillas. So I'm going to shove it down and try to get a little more in. And don't worry that these aren't covered with uh, liquid. They will be when it creates its own juice. And hopefully, we, like I said, we don't have siphoning. And siphoning is when it gets too much juice or sometimes it just comes out. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, next, we will get the rims clean with a paper towel with vinegar. Make sure we get them super clean. And then we will put the lids on. Okay. We're going to debubble, even though it's not all the way full. It will be full, don't worry. And I'm just doing that to get any air that's in the chicken area. Okay. I've got my vinegar. Something on there. Just wipe the rims good and clean. Make sure there's no yucky stuff. And then we just put our lid on. And you just want to tighten it finger tight. Just a little, not too much, sorry. And that's it. And this one's, this one's ready to go in. And like I said, it will make more juice. Now we just gotta do the rest. And then put them in this baby. All right. Okay, we've got all our jars full. And you know they're all clean. Wiped them with vinegar. And when you do check that there's no chips or bins, dents, dings, all that in your um, lids also. No chips in the glass. If they are, then time to use it for spices or something else. Okay, we got them ready to go. And so um, I've got the can. It's a heavy beast. It's a little less than halfway, like about to here. And it's um, pretty cold water because we're doing a cold pack. Remember, this was all cold chicken, so you don't want to break the glass jars. If you put it into hot water, it could break the jars. Now, I don't think, no, I can't double stack them. Um, so we're not going to be able to fit all of these. But we'll fit what we can. And it seems like too much water. We're going to have to get some water out. Let's get a measuring cup. Because <laughs> you don't want it over the lids. Like um, if you were water bath canning, you would do it over the lids. But for pressure canning, you don't. So let's take it down a notch here. I don't know what I was thinking, putting so much water in it. And you can put a drop of vinegar in it. Um, some people do that. Keep your canner more clean, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why. I've never done it. Okay. So this will fit seven quarts. Oh, wow. It's now too much water again. Let's get a little more out. No, that one's in the way. Jeez. So pints you can double stack in here, but not quarts. A little more, you gotta have enough water to can it. 
Okay. This should be good. Yeah. It's up about to about here on the jars. Okay, so these will have to go in the fridge. Okay. So um, you need to look it up for your altitude, but for mine, it's 15 pounds of pressure and quartz are 90 minutes. Uh, pints are 75. Let me get the lid. So this one doesn't actually make sure that seal's in there good. So always check your seal, make sure it's in there good. Make sure the um, this pin is clean and you can see through it. Mine doesn't tell you, it just says one, two, and three. And one, two, and three. So two, I believe, was 15 pounds of pressure. And I know this lid is tricky. Okay, and right now we want it on steam, which it shows. Let me get you guys close here. See the little steam? Because we want to vent it for 10 minutes once it starts boiling hard. So let's light the stove. My stove's finicky. Sometimes it lights, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm gonna put it on high. Let's move this big old sucker forward a little. It is heavy. Make sure these are, so once it starts to pressurize, you never ever want to try to open it. But right now we're on steam and venting. Once it comes to a full rolling boil and steam starts spitting out of the thing, <laughs> then you time it for 10 minutes and you let it steam. And then after the 10 minutes, you close the vent. I put it on number two for my altitude, which would need, I believe two is 15,000 15, pounds of pressure. I better look it up. <laughs> Anyways, I know that number two is for my altitude. And if you're interested in this canner, let me get over here to it. It is a tea fall. It's in Spanish. But I got it on Amazon, and it was only a hundred dollars. Let me back her up here. So I would really love to have one of those all American canners, but I need a big one because I can a lot of quartz, <clears throat> and there's no way I can pay six hundred dollars for one right now. So maybe someday. But you know what? This one for a hundred bucks. I've already used it and it's awesome. The only thing I don't like is that it just slides to close. But you know, once it's under pressure, supposedly you can't open it. And I'm never gonna try to open it, but you know, I just, I like how the all American one locks in and it's nice. Maybe one day someone will have a used one or some person that got one and doesn't can and they'll sell it and I'll grab it. <laughs> okay. so. We'll be back when it starts steaming, and then we'll put the timer on for 10 minutes. Okay, as you can see, steam's coming out consistently. Let's see if I can get in there and show you guys. See that? So we wanna start a timer. I was gonna do the microwave timer, but I really don't wanna burn myself up there. So let's start the timer. We're gonna set the timer for 10 minutes and let it fully steam like this. And then after 10 minutes, we just turn it to the number that we need for 15,000 pounds of pressure. And um, we let it go for 90 minutes. So let's set the timer. It's really hot. there we go all right so we'll let it go for 10 minutes and we'll be back all right so we've been venting for 10 minutes and now for 15 pounds of pressure for my area 
turn it. Let's see if I can just. I don't want to burn my fingers. But it used to turn really simple. I think you have to push that down. Okay, we turn it to two. There we go. Now it goes for 90 minutes, so we're going to set the timer again. We'll be back in 90 minutes. All right, it's been the 90 minutes, plus you have to let it depressurize and cool down. It's actually the next day, so it's not hot at all. I'm going to go ahead and turn. Also, if it is still the same day, make sure that all the pressure is out. And even after it goes down, you let it sit a few more minutes so that there's no pressure at all. I actually let it sit till the next day because it was like 10 at night. So, no, well, it was later. Let's get them out and see. Got the jar lifters. These are the jar lifters. It's not hot, so I could actually just touch it. Wow. So I really thought they would make more liquid. I thought they would be a little more full. Huh. Like that one, the peppers are not totally submerged. I think it'll still be okay, but looks like they're all sealed already. So usually when you take them out, they'll still be bubbling and um, I'll cover them with a towel and let them cool down. And then I usually let them sit till the next day, just covered. And then I will take the bands off, wash everything up, make sure they're all sealed good. And they are, see? And then I'll put them away. I'll write on them and put them away. This came out pretty good. It smells like fajitas. <laughs> All right, and so they're pretty much done other than washing, labeling, and putting them away. All right, thank you. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.